Hello. It's, I want to say it's a pleasure for me and, and, and an honor to be invited to this to this to give this presentation, which I decided to, to do as a as a, as a sort of uh, resume of my public uh, public uh, art practices uh, recently. Um, at this point of my career, I'm after 70s, uh, it's very difficult to do resumes. So uh, there are many ways of uh, approaching my, my work and then and I'm, I'm, I have to choose one of these ways. So I selected, I made a, a, a hard selection to, to point out some, some characteristics of my work and, and, and in, this, in this context. Um, as an introduction, I could say that um, during some decades, like two or three decades, uh, my work has been, has been known as, um, as the work of a conceptual multimedia artist that uses low tech, low technologies uh, to produce uh, um, ironic visual imagery um, grounded mainly on appropriated uh, images that I somehow uh, manipulated to, to subvert the meanings. I'm going to give you only one example of each thing so uh, to leave open the space for questions also. This is uh, this one. This is called São Paulo Turístico, and I made that series when, when I first arrived in São Paulo, coming from uh, living in Puerto Rico during four years teaching at the university, and um, and um, the series um, has inserted this all this trash on on the public sites and, and buildings, historical buildings of São Paulo. Also, this series, which I call Arte de Desenhar, the art of drawing, is, a, is an example of my, this multiple approach that I have with media and in, inserting in, in images into other field of images, um, always with um, irony towards the tradition and towards the, towards the high art. Um, this is, is also... Um, an image of a series uh, called Brazil Today, um, where I printed over um, commercial postcards, um, changing and trying to change the meaning of the of the of the images. Um, the series there was one of the series were about the Brazilian Indians, and the other were about the cities, about the birds of Brazil. Another um, recurrent interpretation of my, my work revolves around the exploration of uh, perspective, perspective distortions, shadows, visual paradoxes like this, like this one. This, uh, this series I have called the Enigmas, and the Enigmas is a sort of ideogram that puts together a banal image of an object, my personal object, and then a strange shadow that uh, is placed as a topographically inserted over the image uh, made as a photogram. Um, this is a, this is one of the of course all this the shadow is totally invented. Um, so um, during the during in, in this aspect my work has always dealt with paradoxes limits of perception, um, abysms, and, and all this field of interrogations. This, is, this work is called um, um, Still Life, uh, The Lesson. It's about an uh, art lesson. This is a classic uh, still life where you used to learn how to, how to draw. This is one, uh, one, um, one, almost a classic of my work dealing with shadows is uh, for the group of uh, pieces I did called Masterpieces in Absentia. So the supposed art piece should be on top of the, of the base and suddenly there is the shadow of this base and 
the extended shadow of something that isn't there. In this case, the bicycle, Marcel, Marcel Duchamp uh, bicycle wheel. I have used uh, to do a lot of shadows of absent art pieces, but was in, inside this family, Merit Oppenheim, um, Man Ray. So I have a, a group of shadows and they're in dialogue with each other. But um, I would like to say that um, if I'm going to approach tonight my relation with architecture and urban spaces, I must say that um, this relation uh, is, uh, has combined two trends. The first trend is the one that uh, is exemplified by this image uh, in the use of, um, is, is a trend that refers to my continuous curiosity for multimedia and for um, new resources for production of images. This is, piece is called Encuentro and is my first uh, use of um, digital, digital uh, uh, yeah, uh, it's a collage uh, made as, uh, made digitally because I, I needed it to be very much enlarged, and uh, that to, the only way to control uh, control the, the that it be rigorously done was doing by with a computer. So that's my first use of uh, digital Im imagery. This is, is my first, also my first printed vinyl. It's a large, large piece uh, that is a commentary on uh, stereotyped icons of Latin America. It is called to be continued. So it can be continued uh, in a way that uh, never makes sense. So the pieces put together are put together, they, they combine perfectly formally, but um, there's no discourse. It's impossible to put together and, and, and as, as different from regular puzzles that uh, each piece helps to form an image. Here, the image of Latin America is never reached. So you can see Che Guevara, of course, uh, Evita Peron, and uh, Tango, Carmen Miranda, monuments, and so on. It's a very large piece, more than 100 pieces. This is only a fragment. But um, my, my interest for digital media uh, is, is, is continuous. So this is a very recent piece, now exhibited in uh, an exhibition that just opened in Curitiba, Brazil, uh, in the Museum Oscar Niemeyer, where these large, this large guns are cut into plastic, and they are like, have this ghostly appearance. They are like voids cut into. I have a detail to show how how the image was uh, was done. So um, just to, I'm not a specialist in all that. So I'm not a, a genius working with uh, digital, all digital media. I always use, uh, I always um, look for look for for how to produce, and then I have them produced. I said that's a long time I I work in, in collaboration. But um, within this trend, um, I also can uh, situate the various installations that I have produced since the late 90s using plotter vinyl cut, like this piece, uh, The Saints Paradox, that has been also in exhibition in Canada, in Montreal, a few years ago. Um, it shows the, the, the false shadow of the, of the Santiago of Matamoros, is, uh, the patron of Spain and of Latin America uh, during the discovery times, and the Brazilian uh, military, uh, military chief commander from the Paraguayan war, Duque de Caxias, and I, I place like an evil, evil shadow of each other. And then the chimera, a special dedication <laughs> to Teresa. Uh, with the chimera, um, is, these are digitally uh, based pieces that combine ob objects and, and shadows. But also, uh, sometimes they got more sophisticated when I could do in collaboration with uh, it our lab in this, in this case, and the, and the technology 
department of Itaú. And this is an animation of this, this, this that I call inexplicable staircase. Uh, this sort of interactive piece, uh, this has a sound also, soundtrack. These examples uh, could also include some, some pieces that I have used more images like a simulacra in a way that uh, substitutions, photographic substitu substitutions. Um, this piece I did at the Pinacoteca in Sao Paulo and uh, it's a combination of a huge uh, planet, uh, it's a fat image that I place on top of the of this space, and then this well, where if you look inside, you see a planet, the same planet, as if there could be a hole, imagine a hole uh, through the planet, to see this other planet uh, through. And there's the light, there's the light also uh, moving according to the sun projecting over the, these glasses. And this other piece that I did, um, it's called, oh, it's called uh, Intersky. I did at the Museu Vale do Rio Doce, where I decided to make this sort of imaginary intersection that could be seen as a suspension uh, of space. So you go through the space as if you could be surrounded by this, uh, this uh, simulacrum of sky. At the, at the end of this space, you could see also a, a video projection. Uh, I was a video, a video, a forerunner of video art in, during the 70s. And I finished with this production in, in the beginning of the 80s. But lately, I, I began to do some video animations, like this one, which is something like that. I built this door, which is, replicates the, the, the door at the other end of the room. And then there's a continuous change of days and nights, like in an in infinite, in infinite time. Well, another trend, uh, the second trend, uh, derives from my growing interest in, in space distortions and, um, and architectural design. And uh, they very much influenced my production during the 80s and the 90s. The apartment is, uh, is an example of that distortion. It's a simp very simple and banal architectural plan, um, claustrophobic but domestic, very simple, and uh, it shows the distortion that could be achieved according to the viewpoint. So was, I was exploring very much this relation with the, with the eye and the places where to see the distortions. And at this point, I did several archi using architectural drawings that I distorted using perspective to produce a strangeness and uneasiness perception. Examples are this, this, other, this other piece, it's called Vertex. It um, shows the, how the, uh, here it shows, in the upper part you see a drawing, the, the way I did drawings until I start to use the computer. Perspective drawing to calculate what would be seen for somebody coming at the door here, where the, the vertex is, and then you see that something became like that, like a, a deep surface instead of a converging surface. I explored this a lot in, uh, more in this in more recent uh, installation I did in Poland, in Lodz, and this is called Abyssal, and this is 2010. What, what, uh, what I want to say is that I, I don't give up of uh, some ideas and, and I capture them again and, 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 and ad adapt them. It's, I'm kind of an artist that has a sort of well and is always digging into the, the well to search some new poetic possibilities for a group of signs, a group of signs that include many, many staircases, that include many guns, that include many, many other images, uh, windows also. Well, now I'm going to, to, to show some part of my ephemeral site-specific pieces uh, when I started to explore this kind of invasive patterns. 
this is uh, shows um, this is show here how I, I did um, this sort of um, perspective with um, with coyotes paws at the San Diego Museum of Contemporary Art, paint, all painted on the walls, um, and poetically provoked by the design of the floor. That's the design of the floor in the upper part, made by Robert Venturi, the the modern architect. He he. He did the spots of a Dalmatian dog, and I refigurate the animal escaping through the walls, also making a political allusion to the coyotes that transport illegally through the frontier. And, and that's just my... After that, I became exploring more uh, the, the, the relation with, uh, with buildings, with architectures. And that piece is called Tropel. I don't know the translation. Tropel is when the animals escape like that. And um, the theme of the Biennale was uh, anthropophagy, which means devoration, uh, cultural devoration. And um, that's I decided to make these animals escape uh, through this range of the building. Some years later, in Denmark, I did this piece, which is, which is called Tropel reversed, so they entered the building to the roof. And um, it deals with uh, the imageries of the city, and I decided to do this, this piece for them. This is all, all these pieces are temporary pieces. They last what they last, yeah. and, and they, they, they are taken away. But uh, when I started to do this kind of modular mo motifs that I distorted, I, I have other motifs. Um, uh, par in parallel. So this motif, uh, graphic motif, I think these are all prints, you know, I think I make prints, large prints, expanded prints all over the space, you know. I have, um, I have a large practice in, in printmaking. So I, I put this, inserted this sort of tire tracks, group tire tracks, as if they could be in this uh, kind of cars, absent cars in kind of rapid and chaotic movement along, uh, along paradoxical sites like uh, facades, like uh, roofs. Like. Sometimes I, I put them in connection with small toy cars. This was done in Puerto Rico for the Poligrafica de San Juan when they wrapped totally the, the buildings with this, with this motif. And this is a sort of permanent piece in, in Germany, in Munich. Munich, Munich. Um, it is, uh, it's called Wrap, and uh, it's permanent because it has a digital matrix. It can be um, reproduced again. So I, during a long time, I was very much afraid of what was going to happen to my work, all painted on the, over the walls. No? Uh, it's going to disappear totally. And, and suddenly, uh, with this, uh, this kind of possibility, I have the matrix and I can repeat. If they want to paint this over, they can peel, paint, and then replace again. So that's, that's a way of, uh, it's a sort of uh, potential of permanent, permanency, without being permanent. Another recurrent motif during, during some, some time has been the, the human Human how say it? Hmm? footprints, human footprints that uh, in fact they, they came after children's footprints, and I enlarged. I made a, did a workshop with children, and I, I captured many many footprints, and then and I then conceived this sort of invasive image that could that I think that this image more than the others has now the, the hapagens also the tire tracks. I think that has a sort of time dimension because it, it is, uh, of course, it deals with the vestiges or something that was left uh, by an action or something that has happened here and left those marks. So this is a sort of um, time, like frozen time, that I think this kind of motifs could bring. This larger one I did with, uh, with the footprints in Taipei uh, I was invited by Dan Cameron during a Biennale to, 
to do a piece uh, for the building. So the building is this enormous and tall building for the Museum of Fine Arts. And I conceived uh, the museum as a, as a sort of um, vase, how say that, cantaro, to put the water. A vase because uh, the, in the story of the, the building and this site, um, this was the place of the well of the city in Taipei, where the where they judge people, hang people, the water was so the civil civil center for the city. Then I conceived the, this as pouring, as pouring outside the, outside the building, as also an allusion to to the saga of the. Taiwanese's that uh, run from China with tra all the treasures of China, but they built a very contemporary civilization in 50 years. I think it's a saga. So it's called Eruption Saga. Um, eruption Saga, uh, the eruption here is uh, assume another media. So I have no problems with, with placing uh, the motif in several other uh, circumstances. So this was placed in in a, in a building in Rio de Janeiro some years ago for, a, for my personal show. And together with these motifs, um, accumulated motifs, comes these this, uh, insects. These insects are giant insects that I conceived uh, with a very precise um, uh, meaning, uh, connected to what you see below. This is sort of cage was built for an artist uh, that uh, in, was left at, um, in Brasilia, the political center of Brazil, uh, in this uh, cultural center. They invited me to occupy this cage, and I decided to do an allusion to our political life in Brasilia. So the, um, the cage should be beautiful, but the evil insects are our politicians. So they live in the, I put very nice lights inside and, uh, and uh, they, it, it was seen like that. You see the insects inside the, inside the bright cage, uh, like um, an allusion to the to corrupted people that have a lot of money, live in those wonderful circumstances in Brasilia. But then when the show opened, then you see the photo in the upper part, it was completely invaded by the children. They love the piece, and because they saw there's a magic in the scale, and they, they imitate the animals, and, and it worked in a totally different way, the meaning <laughs> that I have supposed to give. But I, I accept it. I think art is like that. It's, it must be open to all interpretation. It can close. So only at night, when people have gone from the exhibition, passing through the road, you can see piece with the meaning, original meaning. Well, they, they, this motif have migrated around the world. Here again, I am in Poland for a Biennale, and I use this piece for this architecture here. Uh, with this uh, sort of uh, motifs, uh, accumulated motifs, is a, a very recent piece. Uh, belongs to a series that I have been doing about the plagues about the contemporary plagues. This, uh, this are, they are very metaphorical and allegorical, too. There's a lot of narratives. But this is egg. It's enormous eggs. Um, no, no, no parts in it. It's a whole egg. And these are crocodiles, shopped crocodiles. I did this when I, when I was invited for the New Orleans Biennale. And finally, I couldn't, I couldn't do the piece. But I was very impressed when I visited the city soon after Katrina. And I could see also that um, the effects of that oil spoiling in the ocean. And putting all together, I visited the, the, the Oceanarium. I could see very baby crocodiles, very evil. And then I, in my mind, everything came together. And, and this piece is called Dark Swamp, Dark Swamp. It's going to another other extreme comes another thing I have been using the embroideries. And this, uh, I'm going to show the video at the, at the end of my presentation that shows the making off of this piece that is, is a tentative to put a fixed sky embroidered 
uh, around the whole facades of the Museum of Art in São Paulo. Um, I have been using the, especially the cross stitches. This is another image that was done by people that in Chapel. Um, one of the things I often need because uh, because of the scale, because of the size of things, but they are they keep always with the same group of people. Rappel, they, they keep doing my work. This is a very recent piece I did in, in Mexico, Museo Amparo. Um, I embroidered all the, with vinyl, of course, all the walls of a um, fantastic uh, glass cube. Postmodern, they have inserted inside a very colonial architecture at the, in the city of Puebla. It's a, it's a historical city um, protected by UNESCO, so uh, the facade was preserved, preserved, and inside they built in this uh, glass cube. It was very, it is a real white cube and, and very empty, nude, and I was invited to, to cover with something, and I decided to put fragments of the motifs of the region, and I call this Dreamer's Dream of Mira, Mira's Dream. Mira is the name given to a mythic woman in Mexico that um, has, to her is attributed the, the embroideries of the, the classic, um, typical dresses of um, Mexican women. And she was uh, from the, a woman from the 18th century, she was kidnapped by pirates. She was an Asian prince, princess, and then she was created by a couple in Puebla. So she's called China Poblana, but her name is Mira, and then I call this Mira's dream. I occupied the whole the whole ceilings, and going in, in including to the terraza. Stayed there for six months. Well, now I have to talk a little bit about um, other paradigms, uh, as if I have been using, connected with the meanings of light. Um, light, sublime, we say sublime in English, enlightenment. Um, the, the sort of, uh, the year, in the years close to the millennium, I moved poetically to a different paradigm, in the same X of shadow, but this time maybe to the other side, the light. Maybe, I don't know why, maybe it's age. In the, so I'm having exploring these possibilities of light. Uh, and the, my, one of the main challenges was the, the, with this building, which is the Crystal Palace in Madrid. I this, uh, it's all transparent building. I decided to do three pieces only because I couldn't do other thing in this building because it, any object that you put inside uh, gets small, gets uh, diminished by the presence of the building. You know? So I decided to associate with the beauty of the building and, and enhance the building. And then, and then I placed this piece that you see uh, here in blue. It's called Blue Memory. I, I photographed the, 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 the glasses and, uh, and then made a collage uh, simulating that uh, they had broken and they have catastrophically fallen into the, into the floor. So we have this memory azul has two times, time when the, the glasses are broken and time when they, 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 they are captured on the floor. And you see uh, Chimera is there at the entrance and it uh, really envelops the whole building and people enter to the building through this shadow. And then the word light. Some many times I have been using the word light. In this case, it was on the, my first use of the word. It is I, I take advantage of the sun. So the sun casts this sort of reflection, the shadow, uh, displacing according to his movements. A more recent one I did in, in Porto Alegre, my hometown. This building was created by Alvaro Cesar, the Portuguese architect, and it's an homenage to, to the painter Iberica Margo, who was my professor. And so um, I felt very well in making, very pleased to make a, a large exhibition inside, a sort of survey of my work. 
and uh, do this piece at the facade. That was a real challenge for them too. This is a reflective vinyl that reflected the light. The most beautiful thing in Porto Alegre, my hometown, is the light. And uh, it's close to the river also. So it's, it's, it's a changeable, changeable that uh, also dial makes a dialogue with the architect because sometimes it makes sorts of voids of the inside the, inside the building. But in this paradigm of light, I have been using many reflections. This piece I did inside the hall of a hospital in, in Sao Paulo using several typologies. This is the Museum um, Lazar Segal in Sao Paulo, where I, um, I take advantage of this, this uh, marquise, marquise to, to place uh, several times the word light that was then reflected on the, on the floor, on the ground. OK. Now I, I have um, I have a set of uh, images uh, that deal with my another part that I really take care of, which are my interventions in urban uh, urban spaces, non-protected spaces. Uh, since the 2000, I, I began even before I, I began to do pieces that are um, projections, that are actions in the urban context. I really love to do that because I love the anonymity of the, the production. I like them to. I think that they am playing in the in the ter terrain of the very nature of art um, functions because which I think, in my understanding, is a magic in the intermediation uh, mediation with reality. Um, I love to to something that is seen like a ghost, and then nobody knows who did it, and where is this thing going? And suddenly, that, that has the capacity to transform uh, the perception of that space, of that experience. So this fly, I had the videos about that, but I have, I have uh, made this fly uh, during, projected this fly during five nights in Sao Paulo, in the, all the peripheries of the city. Some some characters of the night, also this uh, UFO uh, I used to do it. This in 2006, two different ones. This this paws are animated by laser, and uh, I showed them in São Paulo, in Sevilla, and uh, in other places. So the, it's kind of a mig migration of the motifs to other possibilities, and this is, is, is a, an action I. I I have a video now I cannot, I can explain only. Um, I was inside that car together with the own, owner of the car, which was my gallerist in Sao Paulo, Fado Simino. Uh, and, I, and I did this sort of zipper with vinyl. Uh, according to this very fancy project I, I was invited to do and nothing happened. Suddenly we decided to do a walk in the city with this making, making believe that we are uh, bulletproof uh, Volkswagen. And this is very fun action happening around the city with this, with this Volkswagen. This is, is the, the word light written in Urdu. Um, the poem um, Pakistan, when I was in Pakistan, um, for, um, I was teaching in a, a small workshop at the Faculty of Art and Design in Lahore. Then with my students, uh, we went to making this projection of a gobo um, through the night markets of the city during three nights. That was a, a nice experience. I hope one day I can show you some more images out of that. But this calligraphy was designed by a, by a calligrapher in Pakistan, and he sent me to Sao Paulo, and I made the gobos, and, and it was a very, very nice experience. This is alludes to Noosh. Noosh is is an uh, Asian heroine. Uh, she was an imper imperatrice, I'll say that, empress, empress of Pakistan and India in the 18th century. She's a sort of grandmother, uh, grandmother of uh, who? The, the architect of the person that, uh, the king that built the Taj Mahal. Um, but she herself, she was a poet, 
she was an architect herself, and she was a very defended the, the feminine, the women's rights. So she was a woman, a Valolet, uh, in that, those times. Nu Jahan is her name. This is everybody read in the streets, read Nu. That's what I wanted, because this is light. The simple her name is light, and uh, I made an homage to this fantastic woman. But I made Luz in Bogota, the same way, a gobo going around the city. And there's another action I did in Curitiba uh, for the Biennale. I wrapped uh, with embroideries um, three um, buses. Some buses have three, three bodies. And they went around and people, they stayed there for the city during four months, and people like to be inside. They didn't know what happened, why the, 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 the bus was like that. Okay, uh, now uh, here comes my, my project for Biennale de Havana. I'm invited to be an artist in Biennale de Havana. I decided to show you what I'm going to do there. This, uh, this is a test I did in Sao Paulo recently. Uh, I have done two tests, but uh, the image I'm going to paint as a graffiti in Cuba has 12 images. But in the conception that not only cars can park, but also flies, also missiles, also um, roaches, uh, whatever. And then I, I have done this with the assistance of graffitis, graffiti people in, in Sao Paulo. And I'm going to do that in association with graffiti people in, in Havana. So that's one. That's that's a detail of this one. And that's uh, the other one I did in downtown Sao Paulo. This were done during the night when no police could come and say, stop doing it. I mean, like 20 people were here and did this in 20 minutes. So this was very fast. So you see the boat, the car, the motor, the missile, the, the, the car, and uh, this uh, centipede. Okay, and then uh, arriving to the last yes, images. I hope you're not too tired. Um, this I have done also some permanent pieces, permanent pieces that have that are in protected non-art spaces, public spaces um, like this. But I, I want to say that that uh, maintenance is is an issue. It's very difficult in Brazil. So I'm glad if I can show you a few because I'm going to show what happened to one of my pieces in Brazil. This was done in an airport in my hometown in Brazil. There's a huge thing made in, in, in tiles, sort of allegory. This is in a cam university campus. Uh, to the computer department, I did the theorem of the drawer because of this whole story uh, in the building about this drawer of the founder of this center. This is done in, in, again in, as a cutout in, tile, in tiles. And this tree is still up in a, in a park where many artists did uh, group sculptures for this park in Sao Paulo. But now comes this, uh, this piece that is totally, totally destroyed. It was very pristine like that. This is a large cube, four meters tall, made for a university place, uh, closed, only for the students. And the it's, place was beautiful. The, some poets did poems on the floor, so it was it's very nice. And I conceived this cube in marble and black porcelain, that, which is large shadow that casts over the, the cast and pushed the, uh, the, the wall around him. And one day, for the, for three years later, I went there and I found completely broken, completely broken. Uh, the people was, uh, have invaded the place because the university have lost the property of the place. And that opened and people started to, to live there, to live in this, over this sculpture. They, they burned the sculpture, they destroyed the sculpture. And when I complain, I have the, the service of the mayor coming and they painted all, all it in gray. <laughs> this destroyed completely the light and shadow effect. And then, then the graffitis again came and 
And so this is the way it looks. So it's very difficult. To the end, I'm going to, to show you a successful uh, public art I'm, I just have just done. It's going to be launched uh, when I come back to Brazil. It, it has taken me like uh, 12 years um, doing the project. I did the project in 2002 for the New York Public Library in a competition I won for the, the new building in Bronx. Then uh, we have, I have many difficulties with the architects and the librarians, and we canceled after eight months, and I brought back to Brazil this project. Now it's done around the public library in Sao Paulo. This is the historical building, um, patrimonium also, and I did the whole sidewalk surrounding the building, a thousand, a thousand square meters of, uh, of, you see the motif. Is the word Biblioteca written as a mosaic, very large piece mosaic, uh, two million or even more pieces uh, surrounding the block. Is the word library written in many languages and alphabets. You see it a closer view. Six, six shades. And this is the way it is. This is again uh, embroidery showing um, there's the needles also, threads, uh, 